It's always a treat coming back to uh, campus ministry. And um, as you heard, I just turned 30, I mean 30, ha, 66 on, <laughs> on Thursday. And I was thinking, I've been around this community off and on for since 2000. So um, you notice, I mean, it's a very transitional community as far as student life goes, but the permanent community, I still see re and recognize some of your faces. And um, it's funny how you do see the progression of time, huh? <laughs> but also with some students, you remember the students when they first show up, you know, goofy and shy and very intimidated by everything, and then you see them grow and become more and more self-secure and confident. They take on roles in leadership in the community, and then you, you see them fall in love. Some of them you get, you are privileged to see them get married and then have children, and now, 18 years later, you <laughs> Their kids are beginning to go to college, and you realize, holy cow, I am getting old. Oh, well. But it's all good. Strengthened by God's sustenance, Elijah, even though he felt like dying, walked 40 days and nights to the mountain of the Lord. Such is the bounty of God. We too, my brothers and sisters, are beneficiaries of God's miraculous nourishment. It is the Eucharistic sign of Jesus. This is my, oh, this is the bread that comes down from heaven for you to eat and never die. I myself am the living bread. If you eat this bread, you shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. A mighty claim. God would be our food our ultimate provision. God actually wants to inhabit our flesh, make us tabernacles. And think what a powerful profession of faith it is to believe this. Our amen is a radical assertion of dependence and desire. Think about it. Every time you walk down these aisles to come and receive the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, and you say amen, it's a really, truly powerful thing. I'm always sometimes um, emotional about it. You see people come up, extend their hands in a very pious way, very reverential way. You see some people who are um, not quite sure. They just try to grab the host. You see some people absolutely clueless. But for those who really appreciate the power of that moment when you say amen. It's a radical thing. You are saying, you are my food and drink. You are my sustenance. You are what nourishes us. The people around Jesus knew just how radical the matter was. Do we not know his father and mother? Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? How can he claim to have come down from heaven? 
The appearances confound them. How can it be? He is familiar. How is it possible? He is commonplace. How can he be from heaven? He is flesh and blood like us. The Eucharist, like the Incarnation, is a scandal to empirical observation and technical reason. If that is our bottom line, we may as well forget all matters of faith, forget the matters of hope and love as well. Even the exhortation of St. Paul that we, my brothers and sisters, be forgiving, compassionate, and imitators of God in our love. It's sheer mindlessness if only seeing is believing. Our contemporary struggle with belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist is a quarrel over transcendence. Only the real, only the here is real. Only the now is actual. Only the observable is knowable. Only perishables can sustain us. The immediate feeling, the experience at hand, the pain passing, the pleasure welcome. Our problem is not just believing that God could inhabit bread. It is believing that God could inhabit us. We have trouble believing anything transcendent about ourselves. Can anyone ever say forever anyway? Is there anything possible left of us after our body decays? Is there anything more to us than satisfactions of power and money? It may be arduous for modern minds to believe the proposition that God could be our food and drink. It is just as difficult to believe anything wonderful about ourselves, to hope that there is anything more to sustain us than matter chewed, drunk, and digested. And yet, my brothers and sisters, our faith, is just that, faith. Faith that there is more than surface and superficiality. Faith that the transcendent takes flesh. If somehow we have become locked in a state of mind in which the real presence is impossible to accept as a gift of God, nothing wondrous will be possible for us. There is no point to the journey, no answer to the quest of our minds, no final satisfaction for the hunger of our hearts.